just cut a promo for you guys a little bit. And College of Legends, but you guys have really been, you know, bringing your music to a new level. You have been recognized for that. Tell me how you got your start a little bit. Tell me, you know, when you come out of Oskaloosa, Ben, if I did mm -hmm. that. Yeah. How you landed in Nashville, how you get to... Yeah, so I went to Oskaloosa High School, graduated um, from Oski High in 2002, um, and I was always, I'd been interested in music and songwriting for a long time and performance, um, and that also got me interested into audio engineering, so studio work and whatnot. I moved up to Minneapolis um, a little after high school to do a studio internship, and uh, then I about a year and a half later, decided to move to Nashville to go to school for audio engineering. So that's how I ended up in Nashville and met Cassie there. That's ultimately why you probably moved there. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, Cassie was there to sing mm -hmm. from Alabama. And um, we started singing together. You know, we would sing on each other's shows. I would sing and play guitar for her when she would do songwriter rounds in Nashville. And Eventually, it took a while, but eventually we be officially became a duo, and really that was only like three or so years ago. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, it was not an easy transition to meld our two styles of music. You know, I grew up here in Iowa. I didn't listen to country music at all growing up, um, and Cassie was raised on country music as well as a variety of other music uh, styles, and so for us to meld our two styles took a while. Um, but after we got over that hump, uh, we kind of got a cool little sound going. We just call it raw Americana music. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so Cassie was an Alabama gal. Mm -hmm. And what brought you into music? So growing up, um, my dad used to play guitar. And I, I just remember kind of playing, I mean, singing with him. And he would always want me to sing. Like when we'd go somewhere, he would try to get me to sing. And I would be so bashful and I'd be like, I don't want to, I don't want to. Um, and now it's like, shut up singing, girl. But uh, I just remember that's kind of where maybe the seeds got planted. And then I ended up singing in choir in my grandpa's church and stuff like that. And um, just had a love for music. And so <clears throat> my dad started taking me back and forth to Nashville when, um, I think when I was like, 17 or 18 just working with a couple different people in Nashville and then my dad um, also got sick and so he ended up passing away when I was 19 and so I just decided I'm just gonna move to Nashville I'm just gonna move to Nashville nothing's keeping me here in Alabama besides my family which I love but I was like I just want to go pursue my dreams and so at 19 years old I packed up my car and moved to Nashville all alone and Looking back now, that's crazy because I just rented this random house from this random man and um, I was so fearless <clears throat> and just wanted to just chase my dreams of music. So that's kind of how I landed in, in Nashville and then eventually met this one. Well, hmm. so let's talk about the, the, the two of you then. So talk about that melding of the different types of music. So... You were a little more country, is that, is that yeah. fair to say? Absolutely. And then Have the, you heard me talk? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I'm used to that. So, and then Ben, what was your style a little bit more again? Uh, I would say alternative folk rock was kind of my style, alternative rock or something. Okay. Yeah. So, so it took a little time. I mean, we've, we've heard you perform, but you said, you know, within the last few years, you guys have really found a way to meld that sound together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. How long have you been married? 11 years. We've been married 11 years. So you didn't find a way to work that out until, you know. I know. It's kind of crazy, right? Yeah. I mean, I think things had to, like, be the right time. Um, I think we were before kind of focused on doing what we do individually. Um, and that's what made sense to us. And I think it wasn't really until the right time came around that uh, we decided, you know, we're strong together, you know. And um, I think timing is everything, so, yeah. Yeah. So you guys have found that strength together, and then together you've made several appearances, or 
and had recognition. So you've been on TV, if I remember right. Am I trying to? Yeah. Or, yeah. Am I thinking bigger dreams than's happened? <laughs> no, no. Yeah, we've done um, a, a contest. We did a contest called the Colgate. Was it at the Colgate Country Showdown it was at that a time? Texaco. Texaco Country Showdown. Yeah. And um, cool contest because they do all original music and it's all over the country. And um, so we got to, to the top five of all the people in the country and we were able to perform at the Ryman mm. um, on television. It was awesome. And uh, yeah, it was cool. We had a lot of friends and family come down to the Ryman to watch the live taping. And uh, we didn't win that competition, but just being in the top five and playing at the Ryman was a really was yeah, a real honor. Just left that part out and they would have never known. <laughs> I just keep yeah. it. <laughs> I, so for all performers, I understand being able to stand on that same stage that all of those other greats have played on was probably something you'll never forget. Yeah, I mean, I for sure kissed the floor, the circle. Uh, I just was like, oh my gosh. It's because it's this circle that is from the original um, that's still on the stage where like all the greats stood and um, still stand. And it was just something special to know that you're performing and singing in the same spot as Johnny Cash and Patsy Cline and these, these legends, you know? There's just so much history. And it was just such an honor to get to sing on the Ryman stage. I mean, it's something that you always dream about, but really, is it ever gonna happen? So it was pretty special to get to share that together. Yeah, it was. You didn't have to travel far either, did you? No, it was funny too because um, like that contest, you had like a local, then you went to, <coughs> the, when you regional. won your local, you went, you won to state, and when you won state, you won to regional, and then, you know, all the way to the finals. Well, when we were at regionals, right, that's what it's called, whatever, the stage yeah, before yeah. finals, they were like, and your, your prize is, you win $1,000 and an all-expense-paid trip to Nashville. Uh -huh. <laughs> and we were like, we live there. And so, um... During the contest, we were there for like three or four days, and they put us up in hotels, so we, we stayed in the hotel anyways, even though it was 10 minutes from our house. Might as well. So we didn't have to drive far to go to, to the Ryman. I was going to say, you probably drove by it a few times and go <laughs> there one day. Nearly every day Almost we drive every by every day, it. yeah. <laughs> yep. I mean, it's something you, like, literally you dream of, but do you think, is it really going to happen? And so check. Yes, it did. It was check. That was great. I want it to happen again. Maybe someday. Maybe. So let's hear about some of those other things that you guys have been able to accomplish together. I mean, we've seen a few of your videos. You guys have a, have a great time of playing together. I mean, I've seen a Christmas. Well, what do you know? we got live TV kicking in. <laughs> <laughs> Evidently, my... I was like, Jesus? Just coming on, uh, on its own, huh? Well, so we... We work with MCG, and then we have the Indians Network too. So we broadcast all the live sports and you know That's funny. all that other stuff around hmm. here. <laughs> Evidently, MCG decided to kick on one of our events, and <laughs> the TV was turned up. Nice. So. All right. Well, we're back after the live TV interruptions. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have have been able to develop, I mean, fun music videos. I, I remember a great Christmas video you guys did around a song. <laughs> yeah. Season's yep. greetings. Yeah. Yep. Does that bring back good memories? Maybe like... Oh, oh okay. absolutely. Um, so that was a Christmas song that I had released on one of my, my um, solo albums. But I'm going to be completely honest with you. All of these amazing videos that you see are all created, <laughs> directed, like everything. Do the camera, the lighting, the editing by Ben. He does everything. <laughs> well, and, Especially during quarantine, we, uh, you know, had a lot of time and we had to be creative and we were like, man, we just, we got to be productive with our music mm -hmm. and we had to make some videos. So uh, had all we had was time. just us two in the house and like a bonus, a bonus room downstairs in our basement. And so a lot of the videos that you see um, was just there. set up by us, you know, it's just, just us. Yeah. So it was it was a fun process. But you so for do a all really those. good job because you're he, you know like it's one thing to be a songwriter, but he's just like and an, an, an artist, a singer, but he's so creative. Like I'm like, how do you think of that? And like like how does that happen? You know, because I'm just like do do do, and he's like, let's do this, and he makes it happen, and I just happen to be there. So <laughs> he does a good job. It's fun. 
So you, you guys are still having a lot of fun, which is yeah. good to see. Do you, do you f foresee a time or do you worry about a time that you go, man, this is just work now? Or do you have those times too? It's just, man, this is just work. Is there something else out there? We definitely have those times. Mm. I, I, and we got some songs about that too. Yeah. I think that everybody feels that way about their passion <clears throat> and their work at some point. You know, there's there's good days and there's bad days and there's some days it's like, what the heck, I don't even want to do this anymore. And then you'll have a great show and you're like, I love my life. Uh, so it, there's lots of highs and lows and I think there's just something interesting about that chase too of music. Um, it always keeps you coming back. You can't walk away from it. And it's like also too with, with the songwriting, it's like, I feel like even if we did something else in our life, you could never not be a songwriter because that's just the way we express everything we're going through. Because all of our songs, most of our songs, are personal experiences, real life, things that we've gone through like heartbreak or family members or things that we've seen happen. And so that's just the way we express and the way that we actually kind of therapy for ourselves to get through things, you know? So I don't think, even if we, I don't think we could ever walk away from it. Yeah. So, all right. Well, you, you guys are going to be, by the time this airs, have performed at Smoky Row, and you've made another stop in Oskaloosa. You see yourself coming to Oscaloosa eventually one day, or do you, are you, are you, for Cassie, that'd be really tough coming from. To live? Yeah. You're talking about living. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think we'll be in Nashville indefinitely. Mm -hmm. um, Nashville is such a. I like Nashville for so many reasons. Honestly, I didn't really like it when I moved there, um, but it's built. It's built been built up a lot more, uh, just economy wise and just like thinking of it as an as a city wise. Uh, it's just built up so much, and I love that. And there's so much opportunity there for us, uh, and not just country music. I mean, there is a lot of country. But there's so many different opportunities in music there. There's mm -hmm. the singer-songwriter thing. There's the Skirmerhorn, you know, center that's there. There's... Uh, Which is the symphony. Yeah, the, the, the symphony. Uh, there's so many different opportunities there. Um, so, yeah, we'll be there for a while. It's home. It's home. Well, we had, last winter we took a small little vacation, my wife and I. And we drove through Nashville and it was nighttime. And we happened to hit, I think it's Broadway. Broadway. Yeah. What, we when had to was drive that? It twice, just because it was so oh, yeah. awesome. How long ago was that that you were Last there? Last year. Okay, yeah. Yeah. And uh, and so it was pre-COVID. Pre-COVID, it yeah. was probably chaotic. Uh, chaotic down there. Yeah. It, it was. We had to drive it twice, and if you know, I'm sure you do. Driving, it's no small feat on its own, especially yeah. the impact. Yeah. 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 So does that kind of seem, you know, that vibrance, kind of also help draw you into that scene even some more? Or, or do you stay away from that honky Because, <laughs> I mean, it was it was just a mix mash of sounds coming out oh, yeah. of the windows. Yeah. You know, you and then you'd the, go by one honky tonk yeah. and you'd hear one sound and you get a, you know. And then later you stick around when it gets to be like after midnight, you just start hearing hip hop music everywhere from the rooftops. It's just weird. It's a weird place. But the downtown thing, I'll speak for me, it is not something that keeps me attracted to Nashville. Um, that was never something that I was like excited about really. Even though we do play in some of those places down there, you know, we do some daytime shifts at some uh, places, which is really cool because um, people are sitting down, having dinner, listening to acoustic music. It can be a really cool experience. Um, but more so it's the creativity of Nashville, the whole push for songwriting, songwriter rounds around the city, different uh, ticketed concerts around the city. That's the kind of stuff that um, is exciting to me, not necessarily the downtown scene, yeah. I was going to say, that's kind of more the tourist trap side of Nashville. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. where the uh, bachelor at parties go. So. But I also <laughs> think, in the beginning, like I moved to Nashville when I was 19, so it was attractive to me. Um, in the beginning, I think for a lot of people that move there, I think it's exciting. I mean, there's no, there's nowhere else in the world that has a, like is, that's like Nashville. I mean, it, it's just something so unique and exciting. 
I mean, if you've never experienced it and you come downtown, maybe you're from a little tiny small town and you come to Nashville and you're just like blown away that there's like 50 choices of music just, you know, door to door to door. And everybody's good for the most part. I mean, because in Nashville, basically you're the best where you're from and you come and then you're all a bunch of little fish in this big sea, you know? But there's just something, I think, special and magical about Music City, having just music everywhere at your fingertips at 11 a.m., at 2 in the morning. And it, they, I just think there's something, I think that's definitely attractive to people, and to me in the beginning it was. But um, now it's like we sing and I want to get the heck out of there. I'm like, I want to go home, it's so loud and crazy. Uh, but, I mean, 19 years ago I loved it. So we're... 11, well, three years on of the official, we've figured out how to work together. We're it took a years, while. <laughs> 11 years together, Barry. Yeah. And, you know, I think you just said you're showing your maturity. Yeah. So, you know, the 2 a.m. and it's still really loud thing just doesn't <laughs> cut it anymore. No. So where do you see yourself in five years, in ten years? What, do you, what are your hopes and what do you go, man, I, I, this will be all right, too, if we hit this level. What do you think, Cass? Where do I see us in five years? Lord. Um, man, I, I think that's such an interesting question, and in, maybe in five years you can send this video to me so I can see how accurate I was or how completely off I was. Um, but in five years, I would like to see us um, still doing music, what we love, still songwriting, and but on a um, bigger level, so to say. It's not like I'm hoping that we're so famous, but I'm just hoping that we have been able to reach more people and that we're able to sing on bigger stages, um, bigger venues, just to get our music to more people. Um, because ultimately that's what we're trying to do is just get our music to as many people as possible, for them to hear our hearts, for us to share our stories and our personal experiences with them. So in five years, I hope that we are still doing what we love together, and um, but just on a much bigger level. What about you? Yeah, I, um, <laughs> you know, um, ultimately, we are able to do what we love to do. Like she was saying, songwriting and performing is a real passion of ours. Um, ultimately, uh, with our songs and the things that you know we say between songs and the way that we go about our live shows is to speak into people's lives a little bit of something. Now, that could be so many different things. It could be some type of spiritual message, which we have a lot of in our, in our songs. It could be some kind of encouraging message, or it could be just like getting somebody to think about things in a way that they've never thought about them, because I think that kind of stuff is really important, you know, to have your mind opened up to different possibilities that you hadn't thought of before, whether it's with politics, whether it's with, whether it's with spiritual things or relationships or whatever. And so ultimately, um, I, want, I want to be able to just speak different messages into people's lives and have them ponder it, you know? Uh, and I guess the, the more people, the better, to a point, yeah. So, so let's talk about some of those mentors that helped get you to this point. So is there somebody specifically that you would like to, uh, you know, maybe point a finger at and say... You know, that was that person really brought me to here. Well, I have to to talk about my brother Nathan, who taught me a guitar first. Um, he doesn't even really play guitar anymore, but when I was about twelve years old, you know, he took my old my my grandpa's old silver tone acoustic guitar and taught me some chords. And that's what really got me started playing guitar. So my brother Nathan was a start of it and, and introducing me to, to different kinds of, of music that I still absolutely love to this day, particularly uh, Counting Crows, their first album, August and Everything After. I remember uh, Nathan 
and I think my other brother Adam listened to it too, them kind of introducing me to it, and, and it, was like, it opened up like a world of possibilities for me in songwriting, in the, in the tone of your voice, and singing, and how you can get across emotion while you're singing. And um, yeah, so my brother, start, my, you know, my brother started a lot of it. Um, let me think about some more. You, who, who do you got? Well, it's crazy because, like I said, my dad played guitar, um, but I really didn't start pursuing music till um, I was like 17. And um, he passed away pretty soon after. And so I, I, he definitely was an encourager and an influencer, but I mean, I, even though my mom has no musical talent whatsoever, sorry mom, um, she has, she's been the biggest backer, um, believer, like, in me, and like, would, is always looking for some way for me to perform. Even, I just remember being young and her, trying to find ways or she got me like um, a, a manager so to say but she just always believed in me so much and I think that's so important to have somebody that believes in you even if it's just one person you know and she's always been that person and I don't know it makes me emotional but my mom that's good the, uh, so now that you've had a few years of under your own belt when you're looking at those young artists, new artists coming into things, do you help? I feel like you have a, a job to help mentor those new people as they come in then too. Let's see. I feel like we probably haven't had the opportunity to mentor many young artists. I mean, we've written with and on a minuscule scale guided a few young artists, I think. Um, but I think that would be a great thing to do. I think that would be, if those opportunities came up, uh, that would be awesome. Because honestly, like, I feel kind of scared for people going into the arts industry, like the entertainment industry, just because I live in Nashville and I see the bent of the entertainment industry. I see, you know, that, uh, Everything hinges on drinking and hinges on drugs and hinges on darkness. I mean, you can feel that darkness in the songwriting, particularly in the Americana songwriting industry. You can feel it. And um, that makes me nervous for people who are wanting to go into it. And on top of that, uh, the whole draw of people just wanting attention from their audience. Um, and I feel that pull. I think we all do as artists. And it's something that we have to be careful not to, to let inside of us too much. I mean, obviously, you want the audience to be pleased with what you're doing, but you know, that's not the ultimate goal, to be satisfied by your audience. The ultimate goal is you love music. It's a gift God has given you. And get it out and send some messages to people. And so um, that's what I would encourage young artists, I think, to to go along that path and not be distracted. Yeah, I mean, because like you said, we really haven't had the opportunity. Um, but man, I wish I could go back to my 19-year-old self and tell her the things I know now. And I wish there would have been somebody in my life when I moved to Nashville all alone that could have really mentored me and poured into me um, and kind of told me, don't do this, or don't go downtown so much, and don't, you know, like, um, I wish I would have had that. So when the opportunity comes up, um, I definitely would be honored to be able to mentor someone and help them, and because you can easily get sucked in to the dark side. So we'll, we'll wrap this up a little bit. I'd like to have you guys perform maybe a couple of your, your favorites. Sure. sure. And, uh, but before we do that, any last thoughts you'd like to share with friends, family, you know, folks in Alabama, folks closer to home and Oskaloosa to the end of on Friday night? Um, so this is airing after Smoky Row. Um, 
You know, I'd just like to thank everybody that's been supportive of our music, you know. Mm -hmm. There's probably a lot of people who don't quite understand exactly what we do and exactly how we make money and how we spend our time and why we travel and stuff like that. But, um, you know, my parents have been huge supporters of what we do, um, listening to all of our live streams and my, my family too, both my brothers and their family, listening to all our live streams and making comments on them and just really supporting us and uh, so have friends of ours too. Mm -hmm. You know, I got a good friend, TJ, um, who lives in Indiana and his family who have been big supporters of us too. And uh, that's important for us, you know, it doesn't go unnoticed. So I just want to say thank you to all of you all who, who have done that for us. Yeah, you know, we have a really good support system. We have really good friends, family, fans. And I just want to thank everybody too, and especially my mom for always believing in me. Maybe a lot of times when I didn't believe in myself. And so I'm grateful that, that she pushed me and always wanted me to, to keep on trying instead of just so easily just walking away. And, uh, and we have a couple of really good friends, Megan and Jack, who live in Nashville and in Arizona. And they're just amazing supporters and just love our music. And it's so awesome to have people that musically get you, but also will um, tell you like how they really feel about your music, you know, because the world can be, you know, filled with yes men, you know, yeah, oh, yeah, that's a great one, that's a great one. But I'm glad that we have good friends like Megan and Jack and Wyatt who are honest with us about our music too and because they want us to be better. And so I just, I'm grateful for the support system that we have. And um, yeah, I just thank you all for loving what we do and supporting us and we'll keep, we'll keep making more music. We'll keep writing songs about you. Yeah. <laughs> good so, and bad. Sorry, fam. <laughs> <laughs> now I get the pleasure of listening to a couple, maybe hopefully, a couple yeah. of songs. Yeah. Well, we can do a song that people can get. I'll do straight line. You want to do that first and then sure. you? Sure. All right. Good to go? Good to go. All right. It's a lonely place and a long ride. It's a lonely place on the straight line, straight line, straight line. Well, you sure got a lot of friends. How many? Who won't stand by? Keep up your notoriety Well, you're the star of your own show You live that way Cause you know It's a lonely place And a long ride It's a lonely place Yeah On the straight line Straight line This is where your harmonica solo would be. The harmonica is the band. So is my tuner. <laughs> if you want to live that way, well, it's 
fish up to you. But it looks like a dirty hotel room. See, I had rented out that same place. But at a price I could not afford to pay. It's a place not fit to go if you live that way Cause you know It's a lonely place And a long ride It's a lonely place On the straight line Straight line You know, we're just two people, but we try to make as much sound as we can. Yeah. That is definitely a lot of it. It was very good. Thank just you. think if Cassie would have brought her harmonica. It would have been even fuller. <laughs> gotta, gotta make them, leave them wanting more. Right. So, so that was a song um, that's available on Spotify, iTunes, myoneandonlymusic.com. You can pretty much get us anywhere. I was going to say, we need, we need to be talking about that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's our newest single. It's called Straight Line. Yeah, so if you guys are on Spotify or Amazon or Apple or iTunes or MySpace, just kidding, we're not on MySpace. Napster? Napster. <laughs> no. So this is a new song that we've recently written. It's not recorded yet, but it will be. And um, I talk about my mom a lot because I love her so much, and there's nothing like a mama. And the past couple years, my mom has had a lot of health problems. And uh, I tell you what, she's such a fighter and she's so strong. She had breast cancer and now she's cancer free. But um, she just has a lot of other issues and her health has kind of been declining. And so I've always wanted to write her a song. And so this last time she was in the hospital, about a month ago, Ben and I just sat on the back porch. This song came so naturally and just so quickly. Um, so this is a song for my mom. It's called My Favorite Parts of You. It was Saturday at the Conoco. You were in the back cutting checks for payroll. I was counting up some play money. Pretending I was answering your phone. We'd lock it up for the night Said you wouldn't be back till Monday morning light And on the way you'd let me steer While I was on the passenger side I've been watching you And I've been thinking it too how all the best parts of me are my favorite parts of you. The sound of your screen door closing brings me back to a table overflowing with large elbow mac and cheese, southern boiled pinto beans. All the pots and pans just to soak in. You turned and asked me what I think. Did I maybe want some unsweet tea to drink? You filled my glass up to the top. I'd go and grab the lemon by the sink. I've been watching you. I've been thinking it too How all the best parts of me Are my favorite parts of you
all the things I do They remind me of you How all the best parts of me Are my favorite parts of you And all, all the best parts of me are my favorite parts of you. Song for my mama. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Thank you, Ken. Thank you. And best wishes to you guys and continued success. Thank you Thank so you. much.